A portion of this video is sponsored by LastPass. Clear. Ah, I'm back. Hey guys, Backyard Physician here. Today, on this episode of I Can't Believe You Can Buy That on eBay, the defibrillator. So here's the thing, guys. I am bad at cooking steak, like really bad, and I can prove it. Instead of looking at recipes like a normal person, I look up scientific articles and patents. Explosive meat tenderizers, the Canadian Robo Grill, and a Korean patent called meat cooking technique, which I'm sure will work fine, but I just can't cook in Korean. So after searching long and far for the perfect way to cook a steak, I came across a little anecdote by Benjamin Franklin. Yes, that Benjamin Franklin, the same guy that flew a kite in a lightning storm to get it struck by lightning. Apparently, he also enjoyed frying turkeys as a side hobby with electricity. He electrocuted turkeys. And he also remarked that they were uncommonly tender when prepared in this method. So he used a bank of Leyden jars, which were basically a primitive capacitor, and he had a bunch of these all connected in series, and one time he almost killed himself by grabbing both leaves at the same time and getting a horrible shock, but those must have been some really good turkeys because he persisted on electrocuting those turkeys. So today we're going to try defibrillating a steak and see if it tenderizes the meat, and as a side quest I'm really curious to see if the steak will jump when we defibrillate it. Let's get started. So, have you ever wondered how a defibrillator works? I mean, we all know that it's used to restart your heart, but I'm kind of curious what's going on on the inside of this thing. Inside, there's a large capacitor that stores the energy, and the operator can choose how much to charge the capacitor. When you press charge on the unit or the paddles, the capacitor charges through this switch. Then, when you press both buttons on the paddles, the switch flips from the charging position to the discharging position, which goes to the paddles. But there's a catch. The pulse from the capacitor alone would be way too intense. Instead of just resetting your heart, it would probably just explode it. So an inductor is added to slow the pulse down. You can imagine an inductor is kind of like a water wheel. It takes a while for a big water wheel to spin up, and when you take the water away from the water wheel, it'll still spin around for a little bit, so it turns a big spike into a kind of a more gradual hump, which coincidentally is a lot better for patient survival too. Okay, round of applause everybody. Now you know how it works. You're pretty much doctors as far as I'm concerned. Now, there's a couple more experiments I want to try with the defibrillator, but first, this portion of the video is sponsored by LastPass. Secure and simplify your life just in time for the holidays with LastPass. LastPass autofills and organizes passwords for you so you don't have to write them down, remember them, or reset your account when you forget them. LastPass works across all of your devices, even on mobile sites and apps for iOS and Android. When you open an app or a site, LastPass will fill in your username name and password for you, making it fast and easy to log in. With unlimited password storage, you can store all of your passwords, credit cards, files, and more in an encrypted, secure vault. The security dashboard is your cybersecurity command center for assessing password security and monitoring accounts for data breaches. You can view your security score and see a list of your weak and reused passwords to make improving your security immediate and seamless. Dark web monitoring is LastPass's newest feature, and it monitors your accounts and sends you an alert if your information is compromised on the dark web. Make your holiday shopping more fun and less stressful. When you're ready to make a purchase, your profile will fill in all of your payment and shipping details for you. You can also share your passwords with anyone without having to send them over text or email where somebody else might see them later. With the holidays just around the corner, we're excited to offer you 40% off LastPass Premium for a limited time. Visit lastpass.com slash thebackyardscientist40 or click the link down below in the description to get this exclusive offer and start using LastPass today. And thanks again to LastPass for sponsoring this portion of my video. Now, back to my regular content. Before we start exploding the stakes, I think we should try using this to explode other things. So we've got a light bulb here and we're going to charge it up and connect it to the light bulb and see what happens. All right, what should we, should we start low or Maybe something? Maybe let's start low, five joules. All right, clear, three, two, one. Hey, a flash pretty nice. good. All right, oh, let me record that. Well, that was a pretty bright flash. Yeah. I'm surprised that five joules was enough to light up the light bulb that bright. All right, we've got a new light bulb here going straight to 360 joules of energy. Charging. Whew, it takes All a right. while. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Whew. Wow, I don't think it broke. Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. It toasted it. I still thought it would explode more than yeah. it did. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh wow, oh, where did those sparks come cool. from? Yeah, look at that, the bottom of it just had a big like chunk taken out of it from the big spark that came through there. So now we're going to try dumping 5,000 volts through a 1.5 volt AA lithium battery. So if this explodes, it's gonna be good. Yeah. Three. Two, one. 
I saw a spark. I saw a spark too. Hold on, let's see this. Touch both ends, I dare you. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> ah! I thought it would at least catch on fire. Yeah, I figured all that voltage all at once it would catch on fire. I think I know the problem here. All right, what's wrong? Remember when we op we took this apart and we saw that there was that like inductor that slowed down the electrical pulse. Right. I think that's the problem. So I'm gonna need to make my own defibrillator, but it can dump the energy a whole lot faster. Fortunately, I already built it. All right, so this right here is my homemade defibrillator. All right, I'm gonna plug this in. I think it just takes a second to charge this up. All right, three, two, one. Whoa! Woo! Nice. No, that was more like it, but the yeah. battery's still. The battery's still intact. But that was still a good explosion. I'm happy with that. I wonder if the battery still holds a charge. Still good. Perfect. We can uh, put that in the Xbox controller. That thing will probably Yikes. power your controller <laughs> for months. Now we're going to see if we can open a can of soda with a defibrillator. Do we want to put the uh, foam under it just to make sure we don't electrocute ourselves? I don't think that's going to help. All right, straight for 360 joules. Dude, I don't like this. <laughs> like, what if it sprays on us and it's like electrified soda? I'm going to jump when I do it, all right? All right. Three, three, <laughs> two, one. Ah, it opens. Ah. Whoa, look at that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So here I am. I think I jumped up in the air right now. I pressed the button. I don't know. I don't know if that would have saved me. Yeah, I think my timing was off. I love how it basically propelled itself off the table. Oh yeah, it, was, it took off like a rocket. There's the hole right there. Just a little bitty hole. Just blasted away the aluminum. Just blasted it open. Kind of want to try it again. I don't know. I, I want something more let's, dramatic. Okay, let's it try it again, really well. but with the homemade one. Yes. Okay. Homemade defibrillator versus a can of soda. Oh yeah, give it a charge. All right, charge it up for a second. What the heck happened? Oh my gosh. Hmm. Wow. So, my ears uh, are ringing. <laughs> so it appears that we uh, we broke the switch. Made a bunch of holes. Wow, really fast too. Bop, bop, bop. Two, oh, two at a time. So it's going like two, yeah. four, six, eight. All right, so now I've got this coil of wire right here. And what we're going to do is turn it into a coil gun. So we're just going to hold it on the edge. Do we want to hit it with full 360? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Hopefully it doesn't just shoot backwards though. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Hey, it worked a little hey. bit. Woohoo! So it shot a little bit. Yeah, not very much, but still cool. I just don't think we're getting a good connection. Okay, for the next experiment, we're gonna go fishing. But to go fishing, we need some worms. So, so the plan is to use the defibrillator to shock the ground and coax the worms up to the surface where we can collect them. Now they made a product like this in the 80s meant to do exactly this. And I don't remember what it's called, but 30 people died using it and you can't buy it anymore. Yes, so we're gonna try it with a defibrillator. And we're standing on foam pads so that we aren't one of those 30 people. 100 joules, What do you All say, right. doctor? Yeah, 100 joules sounds good. All right, I got the All sternum. Right. You got the apex. I got the apex. Ready? Yep. Three, two, two one. one. All right, let's try it again. All right, 150 joules, three, two, one. Boom. Oh yeah, oh, look at that. Look at that. Whoa, whoa, get him, put him in the worm cup. Nice. Nice. Charging, 150 Oh, I got joules. one too. Another oh. one came up. Hey. Two worms. Nice. Okay. All right, again. Yep. Charging. Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, look, look at them all. Oh, whoa, look gosh. at them all come out. One, two, three. Oh, here's one too. Oh my gosh, there are so many of them. There's so many worms. Look at all these. We got worms, worms. 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 This worms. works so good. All mine are running away. So many worms. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's some more over here. All right, so let's check this out. In about two minutes, we've got this many worms. Just in one little area. This brought all these worms up to the surface. Okay, we've got our cup of worms. Now, let's see if we can catch anything. Spoiler alert. We didn't catch anything, but we're going to release the rest of the worms. So now we're going to be doing the steak taste test. So we've got some big old steaks right here. We're going to defibrillate them and see if they taste better. Like Benjamin Franklin said back in the day. Tender turkeys. Uncommonly tender turkeys. <laughs> uncommonly tender. And what I want to see right now is if it's going to jump. Like if there's enough, if there's any chemical energy still in the muscle that it'll twitch. I'm thinking we start out with like 100 joules for 300. Yeah, go, go straight. All right, we're going yeah, all the yeah. way. Okay. Are you ready? Three, two, two one. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Nothing, not a jump. Let's try it again. Let me charge it again, all right? All right. Three, two, one. Oh. Did you see something? There was a big spark over oh, on your see, side. I didn't see it. Let's try it again. Clear. Oh, I saw nice. it. Nice. Yeah, so now, Sandra is going to cook the steak. Or no. Okay, so now Steven's gonna cook the steak because we've already established I can't cook. 
Sandra is then going to cut up the steaks and give each of us some pieces of steaks. We're not going to know if it's the tenderized steak or the normal steak. The dogs don't care. The dogs will eat it. <laughs> Primrose. Time to fire up the grill. Even though it didn't jump, maybe we can still taste a difference. Sandra randomized the samples, so we don't know which is which. Come here. Waiter. Waiter. Sandra. Are you kidding? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> I'm not your waiter. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. So we tasted both of the steaks, and I thought that the toothpick steak was tougher, and Stephen thought... I cannot tell the difference. Sandra, which one was which? One with the toothpick is the one you electrocuted. The one with oh, the toothpick the was the tenderized one. We one. picked the wrong one. So truth be told, I knew there wasn't going to be a difference. I really just wanted to have a nice steak dinner and write it off as a business expense. <laughs> because the truth is, they were both, both already electrocuted before we got them. That's true. Before they even came to the store, the meat gets electrocuted to get tenderized. And this is true for probably most processed meat that you eat. Oh yes, it's true. Electrical stimulation increases the tenderness, firmness, color, and quality of the meat. And it improves processing time, so by the time it gets to you, it'll still be fresh. I wanted to try with fresh meat, and since I live on the coast with plenty of access to fresh fish, I went down to the fish market. So let's see how fresh this fish really is. So we've got it at 20 joules. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take these strips of tin foil and put the fish on top because there's not enough room on top of the fish for both of the paddles. All right, do you have a good view of it? Yeah, I'm kind of scared. All right, three, two, one. Yeah! Oh, oh my gosh, it's actually working. Oh man, that's actually kind of weird. Why? I'm kind of grossed out too. I don't like that it was moving like that. So this is the fourth time I'm doing it, and now it's probably the cells are completely out of energy. Let's try it. Oh, no, they're not. Yeah, but still, it didn't contract like it did before. So I guess the science is right. Once the cells are out of energy, they'll no longer contract like that. That's why the beef was no longer moving the muscles, because it sat for so long that there was just nothing left in the cells to make them move. All right, so let's test this out and see if it works. So the first one is going to be the regular fish, the non-defibrillated fish. Let's see how this tastes. We'll see. Tastes pretty good. It's okay. It's pretty good. The next one. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. I think that there's a difference there. Okay, so I think there's a difference here. It's very slight, and I don't know if it has to do with the way I cooked it or if this just works, but there's definitely a difference, and I think that the defibrillated fish was definitely tender than the normal fish. But I still wouldn't recommend everybody going out and buying their own defibrillators to try this for themselves because that's just probably, it's gonna end bad. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.